The elusive narwhal is nicknamed the unicorn of the sea thanks to its tusk, which, believe it or not, is an overgrown, spiralized canine tooth. Marine biologists do not completely understand the actual purpose of the narwhal tusk. While I can't speak to the use of the narwhal tusk, I can share with you my thoughts on the narwhal fountain pen in this detailed nib comparison. Since the first narwhal fountain pen landed on our shores in August 2019, their nib size options grew from one to six. So I asked Frank from Narwhal to send us a set of tester pens to demonstrate and compare. For the writing test, I inked each narwhal fountain pen with Waterman inspired blue and wrote on a Rhodia 80GSM.grid note paper. Each nib was filled from the bottle and tested without any tuning or adjustment. In evaluating each nib, I focused on three points of concern for pen enthusiasts, line width, smoothness, and ink flow. Results may vary if you use a different ink or paper, apply more or less hand pressure, or due to differing nib manufacturing tolerances. All measurements were taken with a pair of digital calipers and a jeweler's loop. So first we have the fine. Now the fine point is going to be the finest you could get in the narwhal line. There is no extra fine, there's no needle point. It is just the fine. So, but the fine is pretty fine to start off with. Uh, granted, you're not going to get a much, much thinner line. So the fine point line is going to give you a 0.37 line with this particular ink. And it's, it's, while it's very thin and you know gives you just an ample amount of uh, line width to start with, it's it's still going to be somewhat controlled, but it's not going to be as thin as let's say some Japanese types of nibs would be. Feedback on it is pretty smooth for a fine point actually. I would probably say it is a bit smoother than uh, your Yovo equivalent. Um, and while the line width is pretty equivalent to Yovo to begin with. And the flow is on point here where um, you actually can see some of the shading that's going on in the Waterman inspired blue. The Narwhal is a pretty stiff nib, um, I, although I am putting a little bit of pressure here to eke out a little tiny bit of line variation. I wouldn't recommend necessarily doing that, um, but it is a pretty firm nib. Uh, and this is a controlled, precise line for a fine point. For fast writing, it does keep up very nicely. The uh, ink flow is, I would say it's, it's a little bit average. It's not dry, not too wet. Maybe like if I was saying, rating on a scale of one to 10, I might say the wetness is maybe like a six and a half. Uh, it's definitely not as wet as like, let's say uh, some uh, box could possibly be at a fine point, but it does lay down a decent amount of ink, uh, especially if you're trying to uh, write with it very quickly. As far as potential uses go, I would say the fine point is a great uh, starter type of nib size to get into, especially if you are starting with your first fountain pen and your paper quality is going to be either inconsistent or uh, a kind of a toss up of whatever you could get your hands on if you don't have already something like a Rhodia uh, notebook or Tomoe River or any of the, the premium fountain pen friendly papers out there. Uh, Claire Fontaine's another one. If you're going to kind of have like a mishmash of all sorts of different types of papers you're gonna write on, a uh, fine point is gonna give you the least amount of ink flow of all the different nib sizes so that in case you do have like a paper that's a little suspect that it's not going to bleed right through or give you tons of feathering or everything like that. It does have like the most feedback out of all of the nib sizes. So if you do like that kind of that, that scritch of the pen on paper, um, this fine point is going to definitely satisfy that as well as uh, give you a very controlled line. So if you are drawing and you tend to draw or write very small and very methodically, a fine point is going to be the way to go. And the fine point is capable of doing reverse writing, but it is very, very thin. 
It is not, there's not a lot to it here. The ink flow is very stingy when you flip the nib upside down and it will just, you know, give you just a very light whisper of a line, like even thinner than a needlepoint would be. So uh, if you really want to get in with that fine detail and have it be very dry, uh, flipping it upside down for reverse writing would be the way to go. And now we have the medium point. This is the narwhal. Okay, so for the medium point size, we have a 0.47 millimeter line, which again, in comparison with a Yovo medium point is fairly on par. Um, the medium I had for the Estabrook nib comparison was at a 0.5. Uh, so very comparable to a Yovo in terms of nib width. The Overall ink flow is is a little bit more than the fine point is. The uh, in comparison to let's say a Yovo, the the also it's I feel like it's a bit smoother than a Yovo would be, and just a slight bit more pliable as well. It's it still is a stiff nib. Don't get me wrong. It's not going to give you any sort of like flexibility like a let's say maybe like a Bach would be a little bit more springier, um, but uh, but it does you know gives you a little little bit of of pliability in it. But it is overall a pretty stiff nib. The ink flow is pretty good as you might be able to see from the writing sample. Uh, it is giving me a little bit more shading and depth than the fine point is. Uh, also a more generous line of course, so you have more ink on the paper. writing with the nib upside down, gives you another wispy, very dry line, but uh, it is possible, and I feel it's it's a bit smoother than the fine point is. It's actually, it's actually I would say it's it really is like a nib that you could write with both ways, because it does have just enough smoothness to, I would say, be like a needle point, or like the G-Tech C series, um, where it's a it's a super super fine line probably even I didn't measure it but these this line is probably less than 0.3 millimeters uh, and it it shows up somewhat on the paper so um, you could listen right in the margins or uh, if you do have a paper that's a little bit more finicky with fountain pen ink you could flip the nib upside down and write reverse writing on that particular piece of paper and you really won't sacrifice too much in terms of feedback. Uh, and this the scritchiness, let's say. Uh, so potentially this is a great journaling type of nib, uh, writing in a notebook that is suitable for writing using fountain pens, uh, like a Colorverse or Rhodia or uh, Endless Works stationary notebook. Um, this will give you a decent amount of the depth of ink. Um, and also the smoothness is very pleasurable too. So it's, this is good all around, good journaling nib. Um, artwork also I think as well is good, but I wouldn't necessarily aim for a smaller pieces of artwork. I would definitely be looking at something that would be in a medium larger than this size so that if you wanted to get down with the fine detail, uh, it will be you know, the, the point size is going to be a little bit more broader than let's say the fine would be. Although then you could, let's say, flip it upside down and get to that very, very fine detail with it. So overall, just a great middle of the road, medium point nib that has a jack of all trades, a good a starting point, especially for uh, pen enthusiasts who want to enjoy that smoothness, that smooth ride of all around good nib. So now we have the broad nib. So we're stepping up to the broad. This is the Narwhal broad steel nib. Now obviously when you go up to a broad, you know you're getting a much thicker, wetter line experience than with the other two fine and medium point sizes. And this was one of the first nib sizes that a lot of people felt that originally when Narwhal introduced a fine medium that they wrote more like a medium and broad in most other nib sizes. But I think since they increased their nib range and they included the broad and the stub, 
they needed to differentiate a little bit more and make them more in line, I think, with the European standards. So this broad nib was probably what a lot of people might have seen early on with Narwhal when it came to the medium point nib. More depth of color when it comes to the ink on the paper. The point size is 0.57 for the broad nib, which comparing to a Yovo uh, at 0.55, it's just right there. So indistinguishable almost with a Yovo uh, European style nib in terms of its line width. Like the other nibs, it has a, a, a higher degree, I feel, of smoothness, and it definitely can keep up. Its wetness can keep up with very quick handwriting gestures. So this is great for signatures or people who write very quickly, jot down very quick notes. But definitely not a nib that you'd be using on anything that's less than satisfactory for fountain pen ink. So if this paper is recycled or is of a very thin quality, uh, you need to make sure that it is fountain pen friendly because a broad nib will just lay way too much ink on it. It'll end up feathering, showing through the other side, bleeding through not very pleasant for fountain pen writing. In terms of its pliability, same thing goes here. It's a fairly stiff nib and you might be able to like eke out just a little bit of line variation if you press on it, but I definitely would not do that. Uh, if we do reverse writing. Now, for some reason, the broad is really not giving me much in terms of reverse writing. It's probably giving me even less than uh, the medium point did. And that could just be the, the virtue of the shape of the nib is a little bit different. So it's very, very dry, even more so than the, than the medium point was. So I wouldn't really necessarily look at this as, as one that you could opt for a, a reverse writing. Um, style. So this is a nib that's best suited for people who like to write quickly, who like to see their ink on the paper, right? To you know, want to use a, a shimmer ink or a sheen ink, something that's got depth of shading like this Waterman Inspire Blue ink has got some really great shading and you could see it better on a broad nib because there's a lot more ink on the paper. So uh, if, you, if you are much, very much an ink enthusiast, a broad nib is a great way to, to go with here. And it's also a bit smoother than the medium nib, um, is probably the smoothest out of the bunch, um, except for the next nib that I'll get to, which is the double broad. It's, it is a very, very smooth writing nib. Overall, it's if you know you definitely have a platform as far as your medium, your uh, your paper is going to be satisfactory for a broad nib and you like writing quickly or you like seeing your ink on the paper, broad nib is going to be for you. So next I'll talk about the double broad because logically this would then come in line after the broad. However, the double broad is not available on all Narwhal models. It's only available on certain key Narwhal models like the Nautilus I'm holding here, which is the Grand Rhapsody. Um, so it's not something that's part of their core lineup, thus there's not a tester pen with that nib on there. Um, but we're going to talk about this anyway because it is available on a Narwhal pen. So the Narwhal Double Broad has got, of course, a very broad nib. So it rates at 0.66, I measured it at. Um, which is a, a significant jump from the broad nib. And it's also a, uh, a very, like very, very smooth. So we were looking at the broad saying that's the smoothest of the regular round nibs, but the double broad definitely trumps it. So it is very, very smooth. It has a very wet line, you know, not too, too wet, not like, let's say, I would say a Pelican or a Scribo or uh, something like a Leonardo with an Ebonite feed, um, but it definitely carries a, a decent flow and can keep up if you jot things very quickly like I'm doing here. What would this be useful for here uh, in terms of writing is I would say if you are a stickler for loving a, a very glassy smooth writing experience and would love to see more ink on the paper, a double broad is going to be the way to go. Um, let's see if it does any, it does do a little bit of reverse writing here, but a little bit more than the broad nib. Uh, but not so much that I would say it's feasible to do so. So 
So if you dig abroad but just need a little bit more in terms of ink flow and line width and a little bit more smoothness, double broad is certainly the way to go, but always make sure you have the proper paper for it. Now for something with a little bit of calligraphic flair. I have the 1.1 millimeter narwhal stub. Now when most manufacturers say they do a 1.1 stub or 1.0 stub, it tends not to be a 1.0, 1.1 millimeter line. For example, the Estabrook nib size comparison we did here, the 1.1 stub laid down a 0.75 millimeter on the downstroke. However, with the narwhal, the stub nib actually does lay down a 1.13 millimeter line on the downstroke. And then it has a very, by comparison, thin horizontal cross stroke at 0.37. So the cross stroke is actually equivalent to a fine point. And the downstroke is way broader than even a double broad nib. So you're going to get a wide amount of line variation, which is very, very cool. But the caveat to that is with a, a broader stub is that you just have to make sure that your handwriting angle is going to be consistent because the moment that you start rolling your hand on the paper and writing with the nib on an angle, you're going to miss the stroke. But it is very like accommodating. The sweet spot is not so, so narrow where you have to be very, very like cautious about how you're going to hold your pen. Um, but that's just one of the things I think you need to be conscientious about. It's not going to be a nib I feel that you could just write with um, and then not care. Because like you could just scribble with most of the other round nibs and not really care so much about how your hand is positioned or, or postured. With this, you do have to be very conscientious about it. So you do have to slow down. I mean, but it is a calligraphic nib. So it's great for, let's say, black letter calligraphy or um, even like Spencerian. You could kind of, you know, have a faux uh, sort of Spencerian script with this where you could write with it scripty or you could do it like an italic. So you could do something more, uh, you know, italic. You could do like block printing. You could um, do whatever it is that, that comes to mind that would really harness that line variation, which is fun. So it's, it's, very, it's a very enjoyable nib. Um, I would not say it has any flexibility to it. Um, let's see if you could write with it upside down here. Reverse writing is not possible here. So I'm not even getting anything coming out, which is okay. I mean, some stubs you can flip it over on the other side and then get a drier, uh, more pronounced line variation type of line that is smaller. Uh, but with this, you're not you know, getting much of anything here, but then flip it the right way. and It's got a very, very nice flow. So you could see a lot of depth and dimension in that color on the page using the stub nib because it is laying down a really solid amount of ink. So this is great if you do want to practice calligraphy or if you just want to, let's say, jazz up your usual everyday handwriting, it accomplishes that and allows you to write with it as you would a normal fountain pen. So it does you know, everything else that you would expect out of a fountain pen, but the tip of it just has this unique characteristic where the shape of it allows a thick downstroke and thin horizontal stroke. So the stub nib, very useful for if you want to practice calligraphy, if you want to try doing some different fonts, you want, to, you want to copy some lettering techniques that you've seen in a book somewhere, or just write with it and just give your handwriting just that little bit of additional flair, stub's going to be fun for you. But just also make sure, like I said, make sure your paper is adequate enough to be able to handle the excess fountain pen ink. Last but not least, we have a specialty nib that is only available currently on the Prime Macchiato Nautilus, which is an exclusive to Gold Spot Pens, which is the Narwhal Architect nib. The Architect nib is, if you're not familiar with Architect nibs, is basically kind of like a reverse of the stub. So for the stub, you have a thick downstroke, thin horizontal line. With the Architect, you have thinner downstroke, thicker horizontal line. And it's a little less pronounced than the 1.1 millimeter stub in this particular lineup, um, but it does have a noticeable line variation. So the measurement of the downstroke is 0.4 millimeters, 
and then the horizontal line is 0.55. So that's equivalent to, let's say, having a fine point on the way down, and then on the way across having just about like a little bit under a broad nib, which is pretty cool. It does have a little bit of dry feedback, uh, especially when it comes to the cross stroke, but that's kind of to be, I would say, assumed when it comes to writing with this style of nib. I even saw that with the scribe nib, um, which just by comparison, the, uh, that custom grind for Estabrook scribe nibs, uh, that comes in uh, at the scribe architect comes in at 0.38 on the downstroke and 0.6 on the horizontal. So very similar. Um, and I would say that they're very similar in terms of uh, feedback as well. Um, so it's not the smoothest nib. It's not going to be a smooth nib for you, um, but it's going to give you that unique type of line variation. Where this nib really shines is if you like writing kind of like that comic book font style or an engineering type of style where it's like all caps. Um, it is really fun to see that cross stroke just hit right across on like the tops of the T's or like the cross, uh, the crossing through the A and things like that. It just looks really cool and kind of has that uh, letter, lettering vibe that you would see on a comic book. It is really fun in that way. It does work very well for script as well. And it's a bit more forgiving, I feel like, uh, in comparison to the stub nib. So you can write with it in multiple angles and still get a decent flow. It's just that it's not going to be as noticeable in terms of the line variation unless you write with it in a very like regimented way similar to how this the stub nib is. So to get really the thinnest downstroke, you have to be pretty on just like you would with the stub nib. You have to kind of just pull it straight down at the same angle and then do the same thing for the horizontal so that way you would get that consistent line variation. But you do get like a pretty cool looking, I think, script if you write with it very quickly and it does give you just that little slight hint of line variation, which I think is pretty cool. So you can kind of, I would see this as like a nib that you could use for journaling, long writing, and you know, be able to not have to be so concerned about how you're writing with it, uh, and still give you just a little, little bit of line variation and just that hint of personality to all of the writing that you're doing, um, as opposed to the stub, which you have to be a little bit more concerned about your angle and the way that you're writing with the pen. So it is possible also with the, uh, with the architect nib to write in reverse, similar to let's say the fine point, it has a very wispy dry line. But considering that you do have a broader line when you're writing with the pen normally, it may be good to switch this up if you needed to, let's say, uh, write something in the margins or you know, just be able to switch it up if you're doing like a header in Architect Nib and then you want to write a subheader and then just do it in this very um, thin, extra, extra fine type of line. Now the ink flow, I think when we were looking at the broad, the double broad, then the stub, the ink flow then with the Architect comes and draws back a little bit. This is a little bit more of a drier type of nib. So I would recommend if you have dry inks, don't put them in an Architect nib. I would put wet inks in here because then if you put a little bit drier, and I've, I've had some experience with this particular, because it's my pen. So I've been using this for at least like seven, eight months, I would say. And I've experienced it where drier inks tend to not perform as well and you know, kind of like are a little bit more stingy. So um, being that this nib is a little bit on the drier side, I would go with wetter inks. I think this Waterman Inspire Blue works really well with it, um, but you can see when you compare the different uh, writings on here that the architect is by far the lightest of the group here. So, I mean, even kind of comparing it with the medium point, it still is a little bit lighter than the, than the medium point that's here, which is okay. It's, I'm not complaining about it. It's just, it's something to be considering when you're writing with this pen, which also at the same time, then, you know, brings into question, oh, well, what do I have to put it on fountain pen friendly paper or can I use other types of papers? And I think that this is a little bit more general application. You could use it on a variety of different papers, even if they aren't that fountain pen friendly, especially since you can flip over the nib and write with it reverse writing. So it would be the equivalent of, let's say, a very fine, fine, fine tip type of gel type of pen if you were using it on just normal paper.
So overall, great nib to write with general purpose writing if you wanna add that little extra bit of dimension, especially if you like printing or if you like doing all caps printing. It is really fun to write with this Architect nib. So that was your current lineup of Narwhal fountain pen nibs. Comment below and let us know which type of nib would you like to see offered on a Narwhal fountain pen? Which ones maybe they might expand into? Would you want an extra extra fine, a needle point, or maybe something like an oblique? Um, let us know, I mean, they are growing, so they might see some comments and say, hey, you know what, that's a great idea. Let's make that into a new nib. I hope this nib comparison video helped you find the ideal nib size for your next Narwhal fountain pen. You can find a complete overview of Yovo nib sizes by watching the Esterbrook nib comparison video here. If you prefer a more precise line, check out the Platinum nib size comparison video here. Subscribe to the Goldspot Pens channel to keep in touch about all the latest and greatest in fine writing. Thank you for watching and stay inky, my friends. Take care.